society of individuals living in harmony, love, and peace. A society where there is no fear of walking or traveling late at night. Everywhere is just safe and secure. However, such a society can only exist in our imaginations. That brings us to the question of today. How can we build an emotionally mature society? Greetings to you, saints. Welcome to another special episode of Catholic Faith Forum. I'm Evelyn Uwoha. And in today's episode, we shall be discussing how we can build an emotionally mature society. Joining me in this discussion is a very special guest, a captivating individual. We'll be meeting when we return from this break. Stay with us. Emotional maturity means being wise in dealing with your emotions. Life is full of ups and downs. But being able to navigate all this through your emotions and understanding in how your actions can affect those around you. Just as Proverbs 1 verse 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Let the fear of the Lord direct your emotions. Welcome back, Saints. If this is your first time with us, this is Cactus Faith Forum. I'm Evelyn Iwonha. And on today's episode, our discussion will be centered on how can we build an emotionally mature society. Speaking of we, I'm not alone. Allow me to introduce you my very special guest, my friend, in person of Emmanuel Chi Agorom. Hmm. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure for to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And then you look Really good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How are you feeling today? Well, I'm great. Thank God. How for was it coming? Arriving. It was all beautiful. Mm. Thank God. You know, our viewers are anticipating. They can't wait to hear what you're about to say. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Chia Mimano holds a degree in philosophy. He reflects a passion for intellectual exploration and critical thinking. He finds joy in traveling, exploring diverse cultures and landscape, fostering personal growth and cultural understanding. Hmm. He loves making friends and he's known for a warm personality. He values meaningful connections and he embraces the richness of human relationships. Most of all, he loves listening to music. He sees music as a source of inspiration and introspection. Beautiful. What's your favorite song? Uh, personally, I am most grounded in sacred music. Mm. Yeah. But outside of sacred music, there are other secular music that you get meaningful words from mm. and they just keep enlightening you and wow. your purpose for life. You know? wow. So it's not like I have a personal um, particular song okay. in question, but you know, just songs that inspires and you know, gives you a sense of purpose. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Thank All right, you. so let's get to our discussion. What does it mean to be emotionally mature? Okay. Well, before we go directly into understanding what emotional maturity or what it means to be emotionally mature, I think it's quite important we understand the concept Okay. You know, we understand the concept of what emotion is and the concept maturity. Okay. Uh, I think when we do that, we'll, able, we'll be able to come to a proper understanding of what emotional maturity is. Okay. And when we talk about these concepts, emotion, what is emotion? Um, the emotion is a strong feeling. Yeah. And this feeling is derived from one's circumstances, okay. from one's mood, Hmm. and also your relationship with people. Okay. And it is important to also know that emotion is a conscious mental reaction, and these reactions could, could be like fear, hmm. anger, True. hurt, happiness, and it is subjectively experienced. And what do I mean by subjectively experienced? That is, the emotion of an individual is quite different from that of another person. Mm. Now, take for instance a particular situation. Yeah. You don't expect Mr. A to react 
the same way Mr. B will react to a particular situation. Sure. So emotion is individualistic. So it is particular to a person. Mm. Now, when we talk about maturity, it's a state of development. It's a state of growth. Okay. And we have different areas of, in life where maturity takes place. You know, it could either be spiritual, it could be intellectual, it could be mental. Yeah. It could also be emotional. So okay. the topic of today uh, will be throwing more emphasis on the emotional aspect, which is uh, maturity, the state of development or stage of de development. Okay. So now let's dive to what emotional maturity is, having okay, understood yeah, sure. these concepts. Hmm. Well, personally, emo and from research, uh, emotional maturity can be described as understanding and identifying one's emotion. Okay. Identifying one's emotion, managing one's emotion, and communicating one's emotion in the appropriate appropriate way. Hmm. Yeah, so understanding, that is identifying right. your emotion, managing your emotion, and the ability to communicate that emotion. And we should understand that it's it, emotion maturity or emotional maturity as the case may be, it's not just the ability for you to manage your emotions. No, it okay. goes beyond managing your emotions to managing the reactions of your emotions. What do you mean? Now, understanding or identifying your emotions yeah. is a step. Okay. Now, what comes after identifying that emotion? Because definitely, there's always a reaction to emotions. You feel something, you would want to act towards what you feel. Yes. So, emotional maturity is being grounded in not just identifying it, but being grounded in how you communicate it. Okay. Yeah, so it goes beyond just identifying and managing your emotion. Yeah. Better still to how you are able to express it, how you are able to, you know, wow. communicate it to the other person. Awesome, awesome. We have to take a break now. Let's find out who the Saint of the Week is. Over to you, Miriam. <laughs> Today we have two saints we are celebrating. It's a double double something I must say. Well, Saint Simon and Jude are our saints of the week and they were two of the 12 apostles chosen by our Lord. They were two of the first bishops through whom our Lord established his church and from whom every bishop, priest and deacon is a spiritual descendant. The Simon we are celebrating this week is not Simon Peter, but Simon the Zealot. Now Jude is referred to as Judas son of James in Luke and Acts, while Matthew and Mark refer to him as Thaddeus. Only little is known about the lives of these two saints who were apostles of Jesus. Saint Jude was the one who asked Jesus at the Last Supper why he would not manifest himself to the whole world after his resurrection. The epistle that has been traditionally attributed to Saint Jude the Apostle is a short but passionate letter in which he warns all Christians against immorality and heresy trying to enter the early church. Some suggest it is for this reason that he is named patron saint of hopeless cases because of his passionate plea. He stressed that the faithful should persevere in the environment of harsh, difficult circumstances just as their forefathers had done before them. Therefore, he's the patron of desperate situations, forgotten causes, hospital workers, hospitals, impossible causes, lost causes, and the Diocese of St. Petersburg, Florida. Another tradition states that because Jude shared a name with Judas Iscariot, the betrayer, St. Jude's intercession was rarely sought. However, after the intercession of every other apostle and saint was sought, people in the early church would then turn to St. Jude as their last hope. There are many ancient traditions holding that St. Jude has provided many miracles throughout the centuries. Now I'm sure that as Catholics, you always hear of the Novena to St. Jude Thaddeus, patron saint of hopeless cases and of things despaired of. That is the St. Jude we're talking about. Now on to St. Simon. Simon was one of the most obscure amongst the apostles of Jesus. The name Simon occurs in all the synoptic gospels and the book of Acts each time there is a list of apostles without any further details. Now to confuse things even further, Bible scholars argue over whether Simon was a member of the radical zealot party or whether the term simply just referred to his religious zeal. Simon left everything in his previous life to follow Jesus. 
He lived true to the Great Commission after Jesus' ascension. Regarding their deaths, one of the most common traditions is that Simon and Jude traveled to Persia to preach the gospel and were both killed there in the year 65. Simon is traditionally believed to have been sawed in half. I need to pause there. That you are sawed in half. And Jude is traditionally believed to have been beaten with a club. They often appear in sacred art holding the instruments of their deaths. So you'd see St. Simon holding a saw and St. Jude probably holding a club. Now, other traditions state that they ministered in Armenia, Beirut, Lebanon, B Roman Britain, Egypt, and or Samaria and died by arrows, crucifixion, and even some say that they died a peaceful death. Anyway, as we honor these apostles, what we know for certain is that they were instrumental in the early church. Being among the first bishops, they bore the sacred responsibility of transmitting the sacraments and the teachings of Jesus to a nascent church. One day in heaven, we will see clearly the effects of their pastoral ministry. But today we rejoice in what we do not fully know, trusting that their lives gave great glory to God and won the salvation of many souls. And so we say, St. Simon and Jude, pray for us. Welcome back, saints. If you're joining us for the first time, our discussion is still centered on how can we build an emotionally mature society? And just before the break, Emmanuel here was telling us that there is a positive and a negative way that we can communicate our emotions. So I'd like to ask you that. Have you ever been in a situation where you communicated your emotions negatively? How did you manage it? Well, um, like I said, there are various points in time that we feel some type of way. Yeah. And sometimes when we feel this way, our impulses react to how we feel. Okay. And then we make some reactions based on uh, like impulsive reactions. And these impulsive reactions at some point are mostly negative. Hmm. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, yes, definitely. Personally, I have felt, um, I have had experiences, I would say, that I have reacted negatively to some particular situations. Okay. Yes. I may not be able to practically bring back what those experiences are, mm -hmm. but I could share some lights or share examples, yeah. you know, some particular examples to situations that we can find negative reactions. Okay. Now, and these negative reactions, I would say, are carried out mostly by people who I would tend to be emotionally immature. Now, let's take, for instance, um, in an organization, yeah. and let's say in a firm, um, there is an old worker in this particular organization who has spent, let's say, about 10 years in yes. this organization, and he has a new boss who has spent just maybe roughly two or three months in this firm. Yeah. And let's say just two months or three months spent today, he came a particular morning and made announcements that the policy that has been operated on yeah. is to be changed or something for particular reasons best known to him as the boss. Now, sometimes you find out that these people who have worked with this company or with this firm, as the case may be, for 10, 20 years, you know, the, at some point in time, they have impulsive reactions. Yeah. Why would he bring this stuff up? We've been here working the same policy yes, and everything yeah. has been going fine. Then why would he bring something up like this different from what we used to know? You know, it's a reaction that you are reacting to something that you are not used to. Yes, you know, that's not true. taking a step back, thinking about it and seeing the positive sides, sides of it. So would you say emotional maturity comes with age? Well, it is in a setting like this, yeah. especially in the African setting. Let me use the particular adage that says um, the common adage in Nigeria or in Africa that says what an old man sits down to see, yes. uh, a boy who climbs the tallest tree or the Iroko tree, as yeah. the case may be, may not be able to see that thing. Well, it's actually, to me, personally, it's a very funny adage. Yeah, it is. But then it is in, in idea, you know, people feel that the elderly should be more grounded. Yes. That the elderly should know more due to the fact that they spent, they've spent more time here. And then. so yeah. definitely they must have gathered more experiences true, than true. the younger 
um, person or the lad, as the case may be. But then, it is obvious to know that um, emotional maturity is not proportional to age. Okay. Emotional maturity does not deal with age. Okay. It deals with your level of experience and the level of accountability okay. and responsibility. Hmm. This emotional maturity thing, eh, I don't know, it sounds new because I've always heard of emotional intelligence. And when some people hear things about being emotional, they think what comes in their mind is this person is weak. So, but now we're talking about emotional maturity, how to identify, manage, and be able to communicate these things. Emotional intelligence and emotional maturity, do they have something in common? Well, before I speak about the um, emotional intelligence, which is also known as the EQ, that's emotional quotient. Okay. Um, just with what you said about people feeling emotion, or whatever, when you talk about emotion, you talk about weakness. Yeah. You know? But then, it is obvious to know that, you know, emotion is not weakness. Mm. Yes, feeling emotional is not weakness. Mm. And it is, you know, some, a lot of persons do feel that, yes, if I'm emotional, then I'm weak. But actually, it's an opportunity for you to unravel your strength. Okay. It's an opportunity for you to unravel your strength and see the strengths that you could pull, bring out from those emotions. Okay. So when we talk about emotional intelligence and emotional maturity, Yes. Like I explained, emotional maturity is the ability for you to identify your emotions, yeah. you know, manage them and be able to communicate your emotions. Yeah. But when we talk about emotional intelligence as the EQ, emotional quotient, yes, they are similar. Okay. But then the emotional quotient is, I would say, a step higher than the emotional intelligence. Okay. And why, why I'm saying this is for the fact that emotional quotient, that's emotional intelligence, does not just deal with you being able to identify your feelings, identifying your emotions, yeah. but it goes way beyond that to identifying your feelings okay. and identifying that of the other person. Hmm. So you're not just having a feeling of your, being able to identify your yeah. own feelings, but then you go a step to identifying how the other person, person feels. feels. Wow. So when, when we talk about emotion quotient here, it has to do with self-awareness, it has to do with empathy, it also has to do with social skill. A lot of persons take this as skill, takes the emotional quotient thing as, as a skill. And people that um, have this skill, yeah. They, they are able to communicate effectively, they are okay. able to settle conflicts, they are able to build healthy relationships. You know, it's a sense of being sensitive to the feeling of the other person and being okay. curious about the feeling of the other person. So it's a step ahead of emotional, emotional maturity, maturity for me. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Let's take another break. Let's meet to Elefachi for the Know Your Faith session. Stay with us. why Catholics use Missal during the Mass instead of reading directly from the Bible? Well, don't go nowhere. Let's dive into the sacred practice. Welcome, Saint, to another enlightening episode of Know Your Faith series. I am Elefachi, your smiling host. Today, we'll embark on a journey to unravel the significance of the Missal in our Catholic worship. The Missal is a liturgical book that contains the prayers chants and readings for the celebration of the Mass. It guides us through the sacred rituals and helps to unify the church in worship. Unlike just reading from the Bible, the Missal organizes the selected verses in a way that corresponds to the liturgical calendar, creating a cohesive and meaningful worship experience. It provides a structured framework for the Mass, ensuring that the entire Catholic Church is praying in unison and reflecting on specific scriptures in harmony with the liturgical season. And that's why you find that all over the world, we have the same reading on the same day. Reading directly from the Bible is indeed essential, no doubt. But the Missal is curated to guide the faithful through the same liturgy, the entire liturgy, incorporating specific prayers, responses, and scripture readings that complement the theme of the Mass. Now, let's shift our focus a bit to another aspect. Why do Catholic churches often distribute bulletins during Mass? Bulletins serve as a valuable tool for communication within the parish community. They include announcements, 
upcoming events and reflections on the day's readings. It is a way for the church to keep parishioners informed and engaged beyond the mass. They provide information on parish activities, promote fellowship, and serve as a tangible reminder of our shared faith journey. In a nutshell, the missile enriches our worship experience, guiding us through the liturgy with purpose and unity. While bulletins, on the other hand, extend our connection beyond the mass, fostering community and communication. That's it on this episode. Thank you so much for joining me in unraveling the significance of the missile and bulletins. And if you found this helpful, please subscribe, like, and share this video. Until next time, be bold, be Catholic. Welcome back, Saints. Thank you very much, Elefachi, for that beautiful delivery. All right, our discussion is still centered on how we can build an emotionally mature society. And just before the break, I was going to ask you that. Do you agree when individuals say that they feel no emotions, they have no feelings at all? Oh. Well, uh, I will not agree to that because everybody has feelings. Mm. Yes. Even Are Jesus they trying Christ to deny wept. it? Even Jesus wept. Okay. Uh -huh. So everybody has feelings. And maybe they, they have not come to a realization of their own feeling. But okay. it's, it's, I would say it's insane also. Sorry to use that word. But then everybody does have feeling. Mm. You know, let's take, for instance, some people who, who feel like they are not everly wrong. Yes. You know, there are some people who feel whatever they do is right. Hmm, and true. they don't make mistakes and they are not everly wrong. You know, there are people like yes. that. And if you ask them sometimes, why, why is this happening? Or why did you have to take a reaction like this? They will tell you, if that person did not react this way to me, I would not have I've done, done that. So, yeah. so they don't take blames. They don't take responsibilities. They don't take account for their actions. So personally, uh, everybody does have emotions. Okay. Everybody does. You, m you might have a way to control them, yeah. you know, to keep it away from people. Yeah. Some people don't cry outside, but they go in to cry, mm. you know. True. So the truth is there is nobody created without that atom. Of, it's inbuilt in each and every one of us. So we all have emotions. So the, the way we carry them out or we showcase them may be different. Okay. But it's, it's a fact that we all do have emotions. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so back to the, you know, the topic of our discussion, the main question. What are the ways we can build an emotionally mature society? Well, you know, from, the, from your introduction, yeah. you, you made a statement or a phrase when you said um, it's almost impossible to build an emotionally mature, mature society. Yeah. Because, well, I, I could actually buy to that idea. It doesn't mean that we, we may not have it right. Yes. But why I would say I would buy to that idea is the fact that you cannot... The society is made up of individuals, yeah. and for you to, you know, get an emotional, so, um, mature society, you have to get or produce. The society has to produce emotionally matured individuals. Mm. So it begins from each and every one of us. It's not just collective emotional okay. maturity. No, it begins from the individual in the society. Right. Yeah. So how do we build an emotionally mature society? Well, personally, I would say. I, w I would bring it down to our context, okay. uh, relating it to Nigeria as a case study. Well, I would say for us to be able to build an emotionally mature society, having to raise emotionally mature individuals, we must have to firstly um, curb what we call hypocrisy. Hmm. Now, wh why, why do I say hypocrisy? It's for the fact that a lot of us, uh, a lot of persons, in, in the country or in our world today are hypocrites and they tend mm. not to accept a belief outside of their own belief. Wow. You know, they tend not to tolerate another person's idea, another person's mm. emotions. They yeah. always want to, in quote, be supreme. So for us to have an emotionally mature society, we really have to curb hypocrisy and also to embrace the ability to tolerate other, other people's people. belief. You know, one of the problems I think uh, we have in 
um, our world today as a case study in Nigeria yes. is the very fact that a lot of us want to want this supreme fight like a lot of us want in quotes I call it like fight for supremacy fight to be known mm. and we can bring this down to even the tri uh, tribe tribal sector we can bring it down to religious sector we can bring it down to even gender domination how people want only their idea to be supreme True. you know they, 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 they have to tell you this is the major tribe this tribe is better than this they have to yeah. tell you this religion is supreme to this and all of that and gender domination the men would always tell you their own thoughts should count even yes. more than the females and all of that so I think we have to curb all of this idea before we're able to you know come out with an emotional mature society so when we get to that point where hypocrisy is curbed how would it benefit us when everybody now is emotionally mature now the truth is you cannot get a hundred percent emotional mature uh, society mature okay. society as a case case maybe because like i said from the beginning uh, the emotions are individualistic yeah so you don't expect me to act the same way you act in a situation sure so having a hundred percent emotional mature society is almost impossible so we would only i think the best way is just to keep sensitizing people okay you know on how to react to particular situations okay. and the benefits to these things hmm. okay. so if i get you right people that want to get to that level where they are emotionally mature i think meditation is very important yes retrospection hmm. you know having some you know when I was talking about impulsive reaction, you know, there are some times that you feel you should react to something. Yes. But the ability for you to take a pause, the ability for you to just take a, a step back and think about your reaction, think about what, if I'm feeling this way, what, why am I feeling this way? Mm. And what is making me act this So you can even take your pen and jot it down. Mm. It will help you, you know, to, to make better decisions and okay. uh, reactions to carry out. Then also you learn from your mistakes. Mm. You know, these, these things are important. You learn from your mistakes so that in, if you find yourself in a particular situation yes. as such, you know that, okay, w the way I carried it out the last time, it was not proper, so I do it best this time. Yeah. So it's important to, to get all of this noted. So self-control, it's very important. Take a pause, retrospection, they are all important in emotional maturity. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Thank, Thank you so much. Your contribution to this discussion are really insightful. Thank you so much. So our dearest viewers, you know now that if you really want to be emotionally mature, you have to first understand your emotions, be able to manage them, and most importantly, communicating mm -hmm. them positively no matter the circumstances yeah so that brings us to the end of our discussion today if you have questions and contributions our comment section is open we welcome everything please follow us on our youtube channel at dominican media follow us at cff on tv on facebook twitter and instagram i remain evelyn Iwoha, and until next time keep being saints in jeans and shirts bye bye <laughs>